Hi, welcome to Friday Night Chats with Garage Geek. I know I disappointed a lot of you last weekend when I didn't post the Friday Night Chats. I'm very, very sorry, but I've been on vacation, of course. So I've been on vacation about a week and a half, and this is Friday, so I will be going back home around Tuesday. So the next time I do my chat, I will be back in my garage. So as you can see, I'm in um, a bedroom. So this is uh, my friend's home in Pennsylvania, and I'm this is the room I'm staying in. It's an upstairs uh, room. I don't know why I mentioned that, but it's it's kind of fun uh, because my house doesn't have a traditional uh, second floor. You know, I've been doing a lot of traveling. I could talk all about that, but I'm not going to. I, I will probably mention a few of the places I've been to in relation to some of the things uh, that I'm, I'm going to show you in the video. But if you would like to have a traditional uh, travel video with pictures and me showing off like the things that I uh, bought along the way, uh, please let me know that in the comments. But basically, I flew from Los Angeles to Boston. And then after uh, I was in Boston, uh, which really kicked my ass because I flew there in the middle of a heat wave. And this is the second time I've been to Boston. And uh, it's never worked out for me either time. <laughs> but I don't know. Boston just doesn't like me for some reason. And then uh, I went from Boston uh, to Cape Cod, uh, which very very beautiful over there then back around and then up the coast to Maine and then from Maine uh to Pennsylvania so it was actually it's sound doesn't sound like a lot right but no it was a lot of driving um of course had a lot of stops um everywhere along the way uh lots of great things that I I've seen um so I'm going to be talking today about some movies some stories uh, that I read and uh, just a bunch of stuff that I've I've picked up along the way. Um, I, I I don't have my iPad. Uh, I didn't want to bring that on the plane. Uh, just something else to carry that I, I wouldn't use. But I mean, I would have used it for this, but I wouldn't have used it much. So I'm actually going to edit this video. I don't normally edit my Friday night videos. I'm not going to edit it for my ums and ahs uh, because I don't want to take a lot of time to do that. I edited a video which I posted, I think, yesterday, and that was of art from the Clark Institute. And I, you know, that one took me quite a while to edit. So I'm kind of over it, over editing right now. So I am going to just add pictures. So since I mentioned the Clark Institute, uh, I, I got this. I was so impressed with this place. I didn't realize, like, the extent of the art. They, they basically have uh, one, one building Maybe, maybe two buildings, right? They have the, the entrance building, which has uh, the special gallery downstairs. And then you walk through this um, glass kind of corridor into the other building, which has about 20 floors. Uh, sorry, 20 floors. 20 rooms that you go through the art. So it's actually kind of small, but wow, was I amazed at how much art they have. And I really wanted something that would showcase the art. And um, I could learn about that institute. And so uh, I actually started reading this and it just starts talking about how they amassed their wealth. And the grandfather left four Manhattan blocks, one to each grandson. I mean, and look at those blocks, they're huge. And I think this one probably had the Dakota on it. I mean, we're talking wealth, four city blocks. And that was just some of the property he probably had. Just, it's mind boggling, the wealth. I, and then um, this, this uh, the the man who created this um, this institute with his wife, um, they amassed such an amazing um, collection of art. Uh, yeah, so I really wanted this book just to so I could learn more about what I was seeing because it really did blow me away. So I started reading this, and um, yeah, I'm I'm just at the very beginning. And when I was at the same day, I went to the Edith Wharton mansion. Now, she only lived there 10 years. She didn't know she was going to only be there 10 years. So she actually built the, had the mansion built, and it was built to her specifications. She went, um, her first book was actually an interior design, and it was a, a book, and it was a big bestseller, and she did it with someone. And the principles that uh, she outlined in that book are still being studied. 
by interior uh, designers um, to this day, but she was all about symmetry. Um, it was a really, really cool tour of a house because normally the homes that you go in to see are these grand things with all this open space and all this, you know, ornate uh, architecture and design. But she was very uh, much more for the sim simplicity and for lines and above all, symmetry, which is so cool because, for example, she had all these windows, sets of windows on her uh, the front of her house. And in the inside, when you go into the hall, she had that mirrored, all the all the uh, windows there. But some of them weren't really windows. So she she uh, would put like mirrors instead of windows. So if you looked into the, the front um, window, you would actually see yourself looking back at you. It's like all these weird um, details that when you actually take a tour, when you go to one of these places, is so worth it. But uh, when I was there, um, you know, there were, of course, I bought magnets and whatnot, but uh, I, I went ahead and I bought this uh, Signet edition of uh, Signet Classic because I really, really loved the cover of this. And um, this is a really short read. And I was hoping to get it uh, read by the time I would do this, but I didn't. Uh, but I look forward to uh, to reading Ethan Fromm. This is one that I've never read, although um, I guess that this is a, a novel that was taught in many high schools for a long period of time. Uh, but it wasn't taught uh, where I went. Um, I know I've read other stuff by her, but I, I've never read Ethan from. I mean, but look at that 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 cool art. Just I love that kind of. I don't know if you would call this cartoony, painted style, but I really uh, I do dig that. So I grabbed that book. Normally I would buy the Penguin Classics, um, but yeah, this was cheap enough, and I went ahead and grabbed it because I thought I would start reading it. Um, Hopefully I will uh, this week. Along the way, I stopped at various uh, bookstores and I'll probably put some pictures in this um, video. I just love going to bookstores, uh, you know, in places that you've, um, that are new to you because you never know what the bookstores are gonna be like. A lot of them are in homes and they're, you know, you have to go down stairs to the basement so you'll go upstairs it, they're just really neat and so one I went to had these yellow stairs that were quite steep and they went at an angle and they were so cool uh I loved it so I'm just going to show off some of the books I bought and some reasons why I bought them so I bought this oh two of them here that is I bought two of these penguin graham greens because I actually have a collection of these and I don't believe I have these two. So I went ahead and bought those uh, for um, my collection. And I, Graham Greene is hit or miss with me. Some of his stuff I find really, really good and others I find really, really boring. So um, I don't know, I can't r highly recommend Graham Greene. I'm buying these for the, uh, for the collection and I do hope to read them. Uh, maybe the ones I thought were boring, it was because I was too young. Um, I'm also, trying to get all of the Booker Prize winners um, as a paperback collection. And I found two, and the price was so cheap that, I mean, they're readily available, but they were so cheap. This is one of my favorites. I absolutely love this book. I've actually read it a couple times. And that's Jam Kutzi, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Kutzi. I've read lots of, of his books. Uh, I think my friend Judy uh, turned me on to him, and man, He's such a great writer, and this, I, I believe, is one of his best. Such an amazing book. And then I also got A.S. Bayat's, uh, Biat's, or Bayat's um, uh, Babel Tower. And she also did another book called The Possession, I think it was called. Uh, and I know I've read both, but I honestly can't remember what this one is about. Oh, Possession. Yeah, that one I remember what it's about. Maybe I haven't read this, or I just... It would take something to, to click. So maybe it was actually Possession, that one, and not Babel Tower. Oh, well. Uh, still don't mind having this book. She She's also a very good writer. I was in um, a small uh, bookstore where you had to go down kind of in the basement. And um, it was actually really nice. I, I Again, I didn't have a lot of time when I went into all these bookstores because I was with someone traveling. So my friend Bob, whose house I'm at. And he doesn't really like bookstores, so I was kind of, you know, just going in, trying to look around quickly so that I could leave. 
I mean, I'll not spend too much time. But when in that place, I, I found two older books. Now, I believe this is going to come off, right? But otherwise, this is in beautiful condition. And this is another Pearl S. Buck uh, book, Fighting Angel. So, yeah, once this comes off, I think this is going to be beautiful. And I was talking to the guy, and he uh, he tries to collect and buy up as many of these vintage paperbacks for his shop that he can because he says they're very very hard to find in nice condition so whenever he finds them in nice condition he buys them up for a shop and so i also got this one a rage at sea by frederick lawrence and i mean i just got it for that <laughs> awesome awesome cover I also bought a science fiction book there from the SF Masterworks series. I also collect these when I can find them. I, I don't really love the cover art on these, but I do admire the series in general. And I've got about 15 to 20 of these. Um, and uh, they are kind of difficult to find in the United States. This is more a British or a European um a collection but we do they do trickle over here and we are able to get some of them and so i found this one anytime you can find them for under ten dollars is a pretty good deal and i got this one for 7.95 or eight so i went ahead and grabbed it this actually has two books inside of it and um if you go ahead and watch sleepy readers um not sleepy reader 666 his new channel which is sleepy sleepy literature sorry I don't remember the name of the other channel. I'm so bad with this. But on his literature channel, he actually found um, uh, an original copy of of A, A is for Andromeda, which is the first book in this, you know, in a book like that. And of course, I was immediately jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous about everything. I also uh, picked up this book because whenever I find these books, I have a collection of these. And these are just great to jump into, dip into. So this one, uh, is, they're from every every man's library, and they have poetry and short story collections. So these are all, um, and they're usually themed. Although they also do have um, specific poets. And this is poems of the sea. Now, how much fun is that? I know someone. Uh, I think I showed. Who did I show it to? Maybe sleepy reader, and he went yar, <laughs> which made me laugh. Uh, and I found at that same store, he gave me a great deal. I went up and he just gave me a bundle price and it was it was a pretty good deal. So I got um, some CDs and also some cassettes. Now I'm, I'm a big fan of this album, I love it. And so um, I found this one, but I also found that. And this one, if, if it will be clear, now that's, I'm pretty sure, Doré art. And if anybody's watched my channel, oh, I need to cut my nails. If anybody is a, a fan of my channel um, from way back, you know that um, I did a special on Doré and uh, not, not really on Doré, but his art for, I don't even want to go into it because it's going to take me a long time to remember. But anyways, that is, I'm almost certain that's Doré art on this Crash Test Dummies cassette so i got two crash test dummies i was very happy to find very cheap and then i got uh two cds uh the first one i'm not sure if i got this at the same spot but i i think so so i bought this um my foot is cramping i'm gonna <laughs> i'll move it uh not cramping it's falling asleep uh i'm i think i have this but i didn't want to pass it up at the price and i i got this because i just i love that art i love that painted drawing uh, version of um, Etta James. It's so good. And um, it's got some great songs on it, if, if you could see that. But yeah, I bought that for the for the art. And then I'm a sucker for these uh, little box sets. And this one is Yes Relayer with this Roger, I'm sure it's Roger Dean art. And uh, this thing is just so cool. So I went ahead and I mean, I got I got this really cheap at this place. Normally, this would be at least $10 to $15, and I got it for a couple bucks. So, really good deal on that. And yesterday, I was I was with my friend, and I, I wrote down a, a list of some books and record stores in the area. And so, I went to two. The first one was, was not very good, but I, I, I got 
Uh, I didn't want to leave empty handed because I don't like walking into the store and really not purchasing something. So they had a sale bin and their sale bin was $3.99, which to me is not very cheap. But I, I saw these two CDs and I didn't know much about them. And I just thought, oh, 70s Prague. Let me just, let me try them. So I listened to this one last night and sure enough, it's like 70s Prague, but it was quite enjoyable. And it's called Sahara Sunrise. Now, if you actually look at the art online, it's much brighter. I don't know why it's darker here. And I don't know if this is a German pressing, but the words are so tiny, you cannot re hardly read anything. Hardly even you can't read the names of the of the songs. I mean, I'm like bringing it real, real close. Marie Celeste is the first one. So I did start to listen to this. I listened to about three songs. I, I listened to the really long one. First, side, side two is the name of the album and that one came up and that's 27 minutes long and there there weren't any vocals on it but i was i was digging it um so i think i would recommend this if you like prog and then i also bought this steel eye span and i started listening to this and this sounded more to me like what's that group i think it's called lindisfarne it's the one that sandy denny was in for a while um it sounds kind of like that, kind of folk, uh, folk rock-y type, early folk British rock. Um, and I mean, the first song is called 700 Elves, Drink Down the Moon is another one, Two Magicians. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I got what I paid for, right? I, I kind of knew that what it was what it was. Um, didn't dislike it. So I definitely have to listen to both of these more. But if anybody out there knows these and could you know tell me a little bit about it that would be that'd be awesome so those are just random picks because i didn't want to leave the store empty-handed i also bought um an eddie magnet uh he, he he's the trooper he's got the flag and he's running with a black background um but i went into this this store which i was i was starting to tell you so my friend was waiting in the car and i walked in and first of all on the outside i stopped and i took all these pictures because it's just got mural not mural it's like a mural painted around the whole thing and it's video games movies music and comics and that's what it sells inside all of that and so on the outside it's got paintings all around it and so i was taking a bunch of pictures i'm sure i'm going to be pop them in pop plopping them into the video but when i went in i was just like overwhelmed because it was like a warehouse and it was so huge I, I looked at the game section and I could have been in there for a good hour. And so I immediately started going over to the vinyl section. And the first thing I saw is they had a huge metal section and the prices weren't bad. Now, I didn't want to buy any albums because they're going to be hard for me to, to ship or, or to carry. But they had a lot of records and they were, you know, within the five to ten dollar range and and there were ones that I don't often see. And I was kind of like, oh, I wish I had more time to just go through all these records. I'm going to show you a, a B-roll of just, I went right to the metal and I just started looking through. And the prices were about 25 new. And I think that's good for metal because in LA, they're about 35. So I was pretty surprised. Now, I only looked through the first three, but the metal section went on. And it was a it was much bigger than any store that I've seen except for maybe Amoeba. Um, it might be Amoeba's because Ame Amoeba's uh, metal section has gotten smaller. I did buy a CD. Now, <laughs> this is going to be funny because I'm not a huge Rolling, Fo Rolling Stones fan, but I, I bought this and I'm going to tell you why. So this is uh, a Virgin. Okay, it's got junk all over the case. I'm going to have to try to clean that up. But this is much bigger than a normal CD, right? When, when you look at it, it, it's bigger. Now, what they did was they combined the jewel case and the paper replica. Replica. I can't say that. The paper sleeve replicas. And so you can actually pull this out and it's, um, it's a paper sleeve replica. And this one is pretty cool because it's got the zipper, right? And then, of course, you, you pull out the sleeve, 
uh, you know, you've got the sleeve and then, of course, in the CD. So if you've also watched my channel, you know I collect paper sleeves. I love them. And they didn't make many in this series, this version. And um, usually when I look online, they're about 15 to $20 each. And I found this one for $7.99. And so I thought, well, it would, that's a decent enough price for me to start getting my collection. This one also has this like uh, plastic um, sleeve that's kind of yellowy. And it says, this piece is provided to help you protect your plastic case from any possible scratches caused by the zipper. It doesn't quite work. You you put this on, and even even then, when you when you do that, it still leaves scratches on the on the case. So even though this is not in pristine condition, I'm very happy to have this in my collection. So yeah, it's a combination of jewel case and paper sleeve, which. Virgin Records did, and I think they only made about six different um, CDs in this uh, collection. And I would, at some point, like to get all of them. And in that store, I was going around, and some of the comics... I have to turn because my, uh, my foot is falling asleep from sitting on the floor. So they had all these comics, and some of them were arranged, but there were so many boxes, and they were just randomly thrown in, like all kinds of comics just modern silver age golden age. and the prices weren't great but there were bargains to be found so i did not have time to go through and i deeply regret it but i had been in the store so long that my friend actually came in um to find me he's like what is going on i thought you were going to sleep in this store because i was so excited to be in that store i i didn't use my common sense to get out of there but i found this neil adams superboy which i don't have and i mean look at that that cover and it was $4.99 and I would expect this to be around 10 bucks so I, I think I got a really good deal on that I mean look at that and what's really neat is this is number 178 and I have 177 and 179 so now I have a three issue run um and when that starts to happen it, it it's it's really nice because it feels like you're you're getting somewhere with your your collection so there I have that Superboy and I don't know why I got this, but Felix the Cat, first issue. I actually have number four of this, and I found, like, just randomly for $1.99. Uh, it's probably, I paid too much for it, but I was like, oh, I'm collecting these, so I might as well uh, grab it. Um, this is going to be a fun read. So this was, uh, it's a modern $1.25 um, comic. So there you have it. Now... I'm done showing the stuff, although I'm I'm actually going to a, a really nice bookstore tomorrow. There's, um, I don't know, it's a couple floors, and I think they have cats roaming around. I love that. And um, they, they have, like, books, trees made out of books. And, I mean, I just love that kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to that. And my friend is going with me, and I kind of convinced him. I, I was going to go there myself. Just drive there. It's 29 miles away because they have a, a river walk. And I love those where you just kind of walk along the river and they have like plaques and stuff like that. Um, but they have a, a, a theater group there and they're performing Sunday in the Park with George, which is a Sondheim. And I love Sondheim and um, he does, too. So I convinced him and we're going to we're going to make an evening of it. We're going to go early so that we can, you know, look at the shops. There's also an antique mall there that is one of the original antique malls or something like that. It's got a claim to fame. Uh, the town is called Oneonta, New York. I think that's what it's called, Oneonta. I think so. Um, and do the river walk and then have dinner and then go to the theater and then come back. And then tomorrow we're going to the local uh, flea market, which I've been to before in past years. And um, I'm then from there, I'm almost on my way home. Two movies that I saw. My friend really wanted to see Nowhere Boy. I don't know how he heard about it, but he really wanted to see it, and it was it was available streaming, so we watched it. And that, and it's the story of John Lennon when he was young. And I'm going to, you know, give it about a 3.5 out of 5. It, it's certainly a good movie. Um, I didn't like the performances because they just seemed kind of fake. The people might have really been singing, and um, but they weren't playing actually on screen, and their their voices were kind of dubbed in. Uh, for the performance, I, I don't, I don't really like that. Um, 
but the two uh, lead actresses were so good. They, their performances were both great. But yeah, it, it was a, it was a nice movie. If you if you want to you know watch a a fun movie about um, a young John Lennon, then yeah, you you'll enjoy it. It's it's definitely um, an enjoyable movie. I just wouldn't say it's like amazing. But the guy in it, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm like this. Who is this guy? I know my my friend Bob. He's like. Wow, he's so cute. And so I was like, well, let, let me let me figure out who this guy is. So I looked him up and of course I was like, oh yeah. So he was the lead in Kick Ass. And um also he is uh Quicksilver in the Avengers movies, you know, as a little bit older. But in 2009 he made No More Boring. And in 2010 he made Kick Ass. So I was like, oh Bob, let's see if uh if you'll like Kick Ass. It's not his type of movie, but he actually ended up enjoying it. I enjoyed watching it too. Um, Nicolas Cage is great and even better is the uh, Grace Chloe Moretz. She's so young and I think she did one movie before that which is Let the Right One In. But she's so good in this in, in uh, Kick-Ass. So, you know, I, I'd already seen it before so I, I recommend that. It's a really fun movie. Now, two stories that I read. Okay. So when I was flying, I, I put I put this in uh, with my luggage and I started reading it and I only got through two stories. But what I did was I read one story and then I watched the episode on the plane. <coughs> now, the first one was called Whom the Gods Destroy or Whom Gods Destroy. I don't know if you could see that. And so this episode is where um, Kirk and Spock beam down to a facility uh, that houses mm, uh, like the, uh, the criminally insane. Yeah, and it turns out that the the person that he's going to see, which is a former Starfleet captain, has taken over the asylum, asylum and he is able to sh uh, shape shift or, or change his his form, and so he traps Kirk and Spock there. And da da da. da. Uh, there were. Quite a few differences from the the story to the episode. Um, what is added is there's an, a fight scene between Kirk and Kirk, which I don't think was in the in the script, but you know that was probably added for all you know the fanfare. I enjoyed both the script and uh, or the the story based on the script uh, by James Blish and the episode. There they were a lot of fun, but there are some. Uh, um, details that are changed that make the story worth reading. The next one that I read was The Tholian Web. Now, The Tholian Web um, is, from what I, I remember correctly, Kirk, I mean, the Enterprise goes to investigate um, a ship that's gone missing, but for some reason, the ship, when they get there, the ship is is phasing in and out of time, or in and out of, not time, um, space into another dimension. And so Kirk goes on to investigate, and it seems like everybody on the ship, they killed themselves, they went insane. And Kirk gets trapped there, and his ship phases out. And so he's left on that ship in another alternate dimension, and he can't get back to the Enterprise. In the meantime, in the Enterprise, um, this alien race comes in like, you guys are in my spa our space and you need to get out. And they're like, oh, you know, we really need help. We came at a distress signal. And so they wait and then um, the the ship doesn't appear. And so the aliens think that they're lying. And they immediately start building this web around the Enterprise to trap them there. Um, so yeah, the there are some slight differences between the story and the episode. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's also a fun episode, a fun read. Um, I'm really enjoying uh, reading these, noting the differences, uh, watching, uh, reading, watching, and watching these old Star Trek episodes in that manner. And having said that, wow, in 30 minutes, I actually did that uh, pretty quick. So there you have um, Garage Geeks uh, Friday Night Chats, even though I missed one uh, last week. All comments are appreciated. So as always, I want to end this episode by uh, reminding everyone to please, please, please be more intelligent.